Okay, good to see everybody. Game week, so we've got a big challenge this week going into Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, really well coached team, uh, really across the board on offense, defense, special teams. They have great players. Uh, so our preparations are underway. Had uh, meetings this morning, walk through, and then we'll get out here for practice this afternoon. Any questions? Coach uh, Jadavion, is that a COVID case? He's negative. He's, he's, negative. he's just ill. Just Ill. Expect him back tomorrow? Be ready. Hope so. Mm -hmm. Karen, you've been using the crowd noise quite a bit mm -hmm. during camp and even leading up. But just how do you prepare for a crowd that rivals a jet engine at Arrowhead? Yeah, so we've been working crowd noise really since the spring uh, just because we felt like going into this year without teams dealing with crowd noise for a full calendar year, we needed to make sure that we were on point in our communication and our silent count. We were on the silent count in Arrowhead last time we were there in the playoffs, even with whatever it was, 20,000. So we know it's going to be loud. Uh, you kind of deal with it matter-of-factly and understand what you're walking into uh, and really just have to make sure that our preparation, our communication, our operation is on point. Kevin, we've talked so much about continuity with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, Andy and Pat have been together for five years. Do you see that when you watch that offense, just some of those unspoken things and just kind of knowing what they want to do? Yeah, I think, yeah, you certainly see that with their offense and some of their uh, concepts and schemes that show up throughout the years and they put different wrinkles on them. Uh, they, they have an outstanding coaching staff. I mean, offense, defense, special teams, you name it. Uh, they really are uh, good teachers. I, I know a bunch of those guys. Uh, I know they're really good. So uh, not surprising that, that they evolve over the years. Kevin, you've told us um, that throughout camp, like <clears throat> last Friday, you were concentrating on yourselves and not the Chiefs. Is it there, Can there be a time when you just work too hard for one team? You know what I mean? Had you started like three weeks ago working on this game? But... Yeah, I think you do have to be careful there, Jeff, uh, not to have – paralysis by analysis in some ways. So we made sure that we spent, uh, you know, we spent extra time on them, obviously, because you have extra days. Uh, but we, we need to make sure that we, as the Cleveland Browns, are on point uh, before you turn your attention to your week one opponent. Are there certain teams, certain play callers, where you know it's going to be up and down the field going in and you have to just uh, prepare for something like that? What, uh, what do you mean? Offensive shootouts. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I think you know. Obviously, it's it's Coach Reed, it's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, a great offense. We, we get that, uh, and and it's a great challenge for our defense. Uh, I know our offense versus that defense is another great challenge. Uh, we we uh, know what they, uh, how they play. Uh, it's physical. It's fast. They give you a bunch of different looks. So uh, we need to just play the game uh, that is called for in that moment. H how it shakes out, I, I don't know. You were, in, you were involved in a couple of those games last year, Dallas, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Um, what's it like to get play caller when you're just going toe to toe with an offense like that? Yeah, I think in those moments, Tony, I think some of those games uh, really just become, uh, for me, I, I get to watch the players execute and watch them, uh, you know, watch them light up. And, and I think that's the, the nice part. As a play caller, as an offensive staff, we feel like we have a bunch of guys that can make a play. So uh, when you get in those moments, you're really thinking about the players and not the plays so much, but making sure you get the ball in the right guy's hands. Coach, you wanted everybody to turn the page from last year. Your players, Baker mm -hmm. said it's been erased. Yeah. But you want those? Do you still want those guys though to feel what they felt January 17th last year? No, I think Tom, we're so far past last season. Uh, I do think. We obviously go back and look at the tape and, and see what we could have done differently, what they did, what they might do this game. Uh, but in terms of taking last season into this season, I think we're we're way past that. Coach, Baker made some big plays in the second half of the season with his legs. Is that something that was a byproduct of him just comfort level in the system? I think Baker's a good athlete. He's done that over the course of his career, uh, and I think he's going to continue to do that. But but I don't know that there was any marked market change uh, throughout the season. Kevin, your um, comes to like situational stuff, game management. Is your checklist for this year different, or, or maybe more advanced than last year since you went to Week One with the first time you ever played? Zach, I don't know that it's different. Uh, certainly, we have been together for a, a, a year and, and been through a bunch of those games and had. 
a bunch of those situations come up and, and been able to communicate through them. Even in this preseason, we had a, a bunch of great situations to talk through. So I think we have a year under our belt in a communication standpoint, uh, but I don't know that we're going to do anything differently. Speaking of Baker's comfort level, how obvious is it that it's so much better going into year two than it was year one, whether it's your playbook or just having the same guys around? Yeah. You know, I, I know we all want a single Baker out, but I would just tell you for each one of these players, having another year in the system is, is really beneficial. I think for us as coaches, uh, we want to make sure that the guys play fast and don't think. And a lot of times when you're installing a new system, uh, there's a lot of thinking going on and, and it's harder to play free. So I just, I would say that's true of all of our players. What does Teran Matthew mean to their defense and what would it mean if he doesn't play in this game? I mean, he's a great player, somebody I have a tre tremendous amount of respect for. I know our players have a tremendous amount of respect for. He plays hard, he plays physical, he plays fast, he's got coverage ability. Uh, he can be in and around the box and, and make plays around the box. So he's a great player. Darren, what have you learned uh, in life most about Greg Newsome as he's you know, ascended to that starting role for you guys? Yeah, Nate, he's done everything we've asked him to do. Uh, he, he's practiced every day, uh, made a mistake, corrected it. I uh, just see a, a player that has continued to take each one of these days and trying to get better. How important was it getting guys like Malik and John Johnson on this defense who have played in a lot of these big games, and how does that help the, the overall team? Yeah, I think, Andrew, if you look at the, the free agents that came in here with some of those veterans you mentioned, uh, even add Anthony Walker, add Troy Hill in the mix, guys that have seen a lot of football, have, have won football games in, in different programs, and, and I think it's it's invaluable to bring that veteran leadership uh, to a bunch of these young players. They have a completely rebuilt offensive line. They showed it in the preseason game. But uh, do you ever use Callahan to evaluate your opponent's offensive line in preparation for a game? Yeah, I think Coach Callahan and really Coach Kiff, uh, sometimes you'll pop into their office and ask what they see on, on some of these guys. That's that's something you can do. But, uh, you know, th these guys have played. They have good players. I know it's a, a, a new offensive line from last year, but they bunch of, they brought in some good players and they, you know, have some really good young players uh, in that mix. So we expect a challenger. Kevin, I, th I think you, you've told us looking back at that Kansas City game that you feel like you could have called a better game. I'm just curious, how critical are you uh, of yourself as a play caller when, when you come out of these games? Yeah, very critical. I, I think uh, I have to be better. I, I've told the players that before. I don't, I don't think I did a very good job uh, in a bunch of moments last year. And then we've tried to identify some ways we can be better this year. But I can't ask the guys to improve and, and not look inward as well. Baker was talking about his little bonding trip to Yellowstone. I mean, I just wonder how do you look at those kind of, I mean, it, is that a great sign? And where do you think you guys stand as far as, you know, you had a good team chemistry last year. You think it's coming along? Well, I wasn't invited to that either, Marla. Um, no, I think it's it's great. I, you know, I wasn't aware of it. They told me when, when they got back in. Uh, but anytime you can uh, get together away from this building safely and, uh, you know, build the team chemistry, I think it's a big deal. It's, it's something really last year you couldn't do. Uh, you just were prohibited from getting together outside this building. So uh, maybe they're making up for lost time. Baker told us that Nick Chubb actually talks now. Is that true? <laughs> That'd be news to me. I haven't seen that. <laughs> With the rookies that are expected yet significant playing time, do you see their, I don't know if it's their focus or something change when you get to week one, knowing that all of a sudden it's going to be real and it might be different? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody, Scott, going into your first NFL game, of course there's going to be butterflies involved and those type of things. But I think the, the rookie class that we have is very conscientious. They're very diligent about their work. Uh, I, I anticipate them uh, making sure that they focus on, on the process of this week to make sure that they're ready to go. Have you seen guys take, really take ownership these last two years since you arrived of their performance and elevating the organization's success? You as a coach, though, how have, how have you empowered them to kind of take that step, take that ownership? In terms of leadership there? Yeah. Well, I think for our guys, we have, we have a bunch of players, in my opinion, that are really good leaders, and they do it in a bunch of different ways. Some are vocal, some are not. Uh, I'm always encouraging guys to, to be themselves, be the best version of themselves, and I think that's ultimately uh, what will, will, will ring true with your peers, with your teammates. The, the Chiefs were pretty innovative in the red zone last year out of necessity because they couldn't run the ball very well. Um, how, uh, 
Uh, I don't know what, where they rank, but do you consider them one of the toughest red zone teams? They always are. Coach Reed does an outstanding job in there. They always have some wrinkles, some gadget plays, uh, some core plays that they do. Uh, but they really make you work. They make you defend the whole field down there. Is there anything left for him to I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. Kevin, I know you said you were past last year mm -hmm. now, but did, did you use that like in the off season? Did you want coaches and players to sit with that and use it kind of you know as fuel in the off season earlier in the off season? Yeah, I would say for sure. Anytime you're one of those 31 teams that don't win, uh, you take that last loss personally and, and you carry that with you in the off season. Uh, but I think once you get into training camp, that you turn the page and you're you're on to on to this year, 2021. Speaking of this game, Kevin, I know every game's important, but do you sense a little more excitement just because it's two really good football teams playing the game? Not from, I mean, but obviously they're a great football team. We know that this is going to be a challenge, but uh, you know, it's it's game one. We got to pour everything we have into it into game one. So. All right, I'm a stickler for coin toss deferrals, but that is I, I know you are. a serious question. <laughs> yep. uh, you take all the data from last year, and has it changed anything? I would tell you, Tony, we absolutely look at, at the data from last year, look at what we did, and, and, and look, talk about what we may have done differently, and, and that will inform us uh, going forward. Is that yes or no? Has it changed? <laughs> yes, no. Yeah.